I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Stephanie Cook, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tim. It's wonderful to be here. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know, where you teach and what you teach. Okay. Um, I teach at George Washington Carver High School, which is a, a public Waldorf high school. It's actually the first public Waldorf high school in the country. Um, we've been open um, going into six years now. I am a social studies teacher, um, so I teach geography, contemporary global issues. I also teach economics and government, and I teach yoga. Okay, we'll get to the yoga in a minute. Okay, okay. but tell me about the other the other subjects mm -hmm. and kind of the importance of of like students understanding you know our position in the world. Sure, uh, I mean you kind of said it right there. Uh, geography is this essential foundation for the study of history, right? I mean you got to know where things are. Um, and when I went to high school, we didn't actually have uh, geography in Sac City Unified School District. So um, something that began in the late 90s. And um, it is the subject in which students get to travel the world and see um, you know, what life is like, what the physical geography is like, what the landscape is like, but also um, you know, what the cultural geography is like, what are the people all about. Um, and that helps to give them the background to understand the history in their sophomore and junior years, right? The world wars and um, whether it have been ancient history or modern history, that they understand where the landscape is, where the continents are, and um, you know, the history of the people. Do you find that in the beginning kids are really unclear on not just, you know, you know, where is Canada on the map, but, you know, our position as a country and our relationships with other countries. Absolutely. I mean, we have some students that come in who are already, um, you know, who are already aware and abreast of the situation. Um, and, and when it comes to um, global conflicts, these are students, maybe they are immigrant students, so they mm -hmm. understand because they themselves have traveled. Um, or they have uh, members of their family that are in the military, so they're familiar with what's going on as far as modern conflicts. Um, but certainly many of our students, you know, barely understand where the United States is in relation to Mexico. You know, um, now if they've had, you know, great, uh, great uh, social studies teachers in their earlier grades, they have more understanding. Um, so that's something that we start with. We start with the whole of our, um, of our globe at the very beginning of the year and then we get into the parts. We get into looking at each region, the cultural regions, and we travel those um, 11 regions together throughout the course of the year. Now, at the very beginning, you said it's a Waldorf school. Mm -hmm. um, explain what that means. Yeah, um, Waldorf methods um, come from the teachings, uh, philosophy of um, Rudolf Steiner, who um, who was an edu educator um, and just a real a free thinker, a free thinker um, in the um, in, in the eight, late 1800s, early 1900s, and uh, so our teaching methods look at the whole child, this concept of looking at the whole child. So not just paying attention to the way they think, but also how they feel and what their willing is like, what they do with their hands, their heart, and their head. So instead of just um, being a vessel that can repeat back facts and concepts, what, where is their reflection on something? Where is their heart on something? Um, what is their social emotional landscape like? and um, what can they produce with their actual hands to demonstrate knowledge about something, you know, cognitive understanding as well as um, that heart reflection, that social emotional understanding. So that's a, you know, in a, in a nutshell, real mm -hmm. small nutshell, um, kind of th this philosophy that runs through all of our curriculum throughout the school. Um, so, you know, getting down in, in the dirt, getting, getting their hands dirty, we have an or organic garden at our, um, on our campus. Students are, you know, in an elective wheel in which they do gardening almost every year. Um, they are also doing a lot of movement through drama, um, dance, um, and learning other aspects of the arts. So it sounds a lot like Common Core. Absolutely, absolutely. So when other other schools and districts are starting to get immersed into it, you're already in the middle of it. Yeah, not a. Pro I have. It's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, the, wor the work that we've already been doing in. Um, in our school, this heavy-duty, persuasive, um, argumentative writing in, in, my, in my classes, right? That's essential to Common Core, and it's, it's what we've been doing for years. I mean, it's good teaching. Um, so um, that, that aspect of, of supporting, um, supporting ideas with evidence and also of becoming, um, you know, really an expert 
in as many um, layers of something that you're studying as possible, not just being able to write about it and read about it, being able to draw and paint about it, to move about it. And to explain mm -hmm. how you got that answer and what that answer means mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's also this, it's a natural character builder, right? It's, it's a natural character education system because students um, get into what they're doing. Um, they see themselves in it because they're asked to really go deep into who they are through their head, through their heart, and through their hands and create something that's meaningful to them. Um, it's not just a ditto. It's not just a bubble. It's um, an end product that they want to keep. Um, so I'm talking more specifically in my class about these illustrated portfolios that they create. Um, they end up wanting to leave those out on, on the coffee table for all four years of school. And when they graduate and go away to school or you know, go into their jobs, they pack those away in a file box. And when they buy their first home, they find that file box and pull that out and go, wow, I can't believe I did all this. This is amazing. It's not a sheet of dittos. It's you know, a, a, some kind of artistic representation um, in written form, but also often with these you know, gorgeous illustrations and portraits of the people we study. So now let's talk about yoga. How is that part of what you're doing there? Well, I teach yoga, vinyasa yoga, um, in, uh, to juniors who I don't normally teach in social studies. I teach the ninth graders and the 12th graders. So I have the 11th graders for this vinyasa yoga class. And we teach, I teach three times a week. And it's part of their elective wheel. So they also have a photography wheel that year um, and, and some other electives. Um, so I have them for nine weeks. and. A lot of my students have been exposed to um, yoga, different types of yoga, um, and some of them haven't. And so, you know, we have 55 minutes to, uh, to get flexible. <laughs> and it's exciting for me because I, I get to have this, these 11th graders just before I have them begin as 12th graders. Mm -hmm. So we get to develop, um, it's a different kind of class than, you know, an acad rigorous academic class. It's a, it's a rigorous physical movement class, you know, um, and I get to learn new things about students that, um, you know, I didn't know before. Uh, so it's, I mean, I feel blessed to be able to teach yoga, you know, at, at, and to work with these kids. It's awesome. Well, you're, you're teaching the flexibility, of course, but it's also, you know, the, the relaxation, the patience. Mm -hmm. It's self-care. And the expectation that, that, you know, something you do now, you know, it might be hard, but give it time, you'll be able to accomplish it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in, in some of the studies of some yoga philosophy, there's this idea of um, stirasuka or this idea of strength and ease, doing something with strength and ease. And I think that idea applies absolutely to what we study, right? How can we study something with rigor, but how can we also do it with grace, right? And, and I think that's, right, we're always trying to figure that out as human beings and, and teenagers all subjects, especially. Yeah, all, all yeah. Subjects, yeah. yeah. I mean, they can take what they what they do in yoga class to, back into my social studies classroom, but they can take it into any subject. Absolutely. So, how long have you been a teacher? I am going into my fourteenth year, but I like to say it's been longer than that because I've been working with teenagers since 1996. I, I've always known I wanted to work with teenagers, so I've worked in the group home system. Um, I've, you know, worked in summer elementary school programs before I actually was, uh, had my credentials, but officially 14 years in Sac City. What inspired you to become a teacher? Oh, uh, well, absolutely being, uh, being a, I mean, I became specifically a high school teacher because of the experiences I had in high school. Um, and, you know, watching, um, you know, really the tug and pull of, the 90s on um, my friends and my family and coming into my own at that time. Um, I had great teachers. I also struggled. I was definitely a student who was, um, you know, gifted and at risk in many ways. And so I think finding teachers for the first time that saw through maybe a lot of the trouble and were able to hone in on what the gifts were and to help me, you know, get there to accomplish, to have high expectations. I was like, this is a powerful tool, right? And it turned me into someone who wanted to do that same work for, for people. And you got to identify with those kids. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, I went to public high school, so and I teach in public high school. So um, it's a badge of honor, mm. you know. Well, congratulations to you. We appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Stephanie Cook, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the uh, Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.